In this video, we'll go through some important properties of vector fields that are useful for performing uh, quick calculations under certain circumstances. So there are two important identities that you should know. First one is the divergence of the curl of a vector field is always equal to zero. Or using the uh, algorithms that we developed, then you can also make an equivalent statement like this. So the dot product of our del operator with uh, the cross product of the del operator with the vector field always has to be equal to zero. The second property that's very useful is the curl of the gradient of some scalar function is always equal to zero as well here. This is phi is a scalar function. Here v is a scalar uh, vector function. In uh, an alternative notation, you can also write this as del cross gradient of phi is always equal to zero. Okay, so this allows you to compute uh, these quantities extremely rapidly. But this one also has a few important implications. Which we'll go over. So the first one is if the curl of some vector field, and we'll denote the vector field as E now, um, to put it into a context of electric fields indirectly, if this is equal to zero, Then for a given vector field E, we can find a scalar function phi such that the gradient of that scalar function gives us our vector field back subject to uh, plus or minus. Okay, so this should remind you of a result that you saw in electrostatics where minus a gradient of the electrostatic potential gives you the electric field. The second important implication is if the curl of a vector field is zero, because of our definition of the curl, this implies that the closed loop line integral about some path of our vector field has to equal to zero regardless of the path taken. Again, okay, this is extremely important. You can take any path that you want. If the curl of a vector field is zero, then the closed loop line integral will always be equal to zero. Uh, In that case, so if the curl of a vector field is zero, or if um, the closed loop line integral is equal to zero independent of the path, then we call this a conservative vector field. Okay. 
And in the context of, for example, work being done, uh, it means that you can take any path between two points and you will find the same, uh, you'll do the same work. Okay, so in other words, putting these two together, you have closed loop line integral. Since the curl was equal to zero, there must be a scalar function phi for which the gradient gives you back the vector field. So this is the same thing. It's calculating that. This has to be equal to zero. And since in general, the gradient of a vector field is not usually equal to zero. This means that uh, this gradient, which um, gave us the uh, the change in energy as we went from one uh, equipotential to the other. It's the same thing as saying, the closed loop is the same thing as saying you're going from one point at R1 to that same point along some path. So this must be just equal to the difference of our scalar function at those two points. And that's how you get zero. So for conservative vector fields, you don't need to evaluate the line integral. You only need the value of the, you don't need to evaluate the line integral of the gradient. You just need the value of the scalar function at the endpoints. So in general, If you have a vector field that can be expressed in terms of the gradient of a function, and you wanna find the line integral between point R1 and point R2, this is just equal to the difference of the values at the ends of your, uh, of your, uh, of your path. Okay, so this is regardless of path. All right, so these were some properties that uh, may be of use in simplifying certain calculations. In the next, in the next video, we'll go through an example uh, explicitly showing how we can calculate the curl of a vector field using its definition and verify this method of calculation using our uh, algorithm that we showed in the previous video.